Yo, welcome to Not Right Music. Today, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite things to do for free improvisation, and that's conducted improvisation. Coming right. With free improvisation comes a lot of problems. Uh, not knowing how to begin to play, uh, being unable to connect with the other musicians, uh, easily drifting off into chaos as a group, or, or just not sounding all that particularly good. Uh, there is, however, one way to help you get into free improvising. Conducted improvisation. Having someone as a dedicated conductor control the improvisation with gestures, signs, and the body movements. And for this video, I will refer to all of these as gestures. When most people think of conducting, they think of the classical maestro, perched in front of a large orchestra, dressed in a tuxedo, and gracefully directing the music. But let's look how to use conducting as a role in improvised music. You can start as easy as you like. Some of the most basic commands for improvised conducting are play, stop playing, play louder, and play quieter. All simple enough that you most likely don't even need to practice the gestures with the players, but powerful enough that you will be able to create improvised music as deep as everyone's imaginations allow them to get in any style of music. This alone can help pull you out of a free improv rut. I recommend doing this with a group of players, with everyone taking turns conducting at some point. Then, when you want to be able to do more as an improvising conductor, you might want to think about adding more complex gestures. So, uh, baton or freehand? A baton is generally used to extend the conductor's movements further to make it easier to see. This can be important when conducting larger orchestras. Freehand conducting with no baton gives freedom to both hands and a combination of gestures using fingers as well. Various improvising conductors have their own preferences. Lawrence Butch Morris was almost always seen with a baton, while Walter Thompson is rarely, if ever, seen using one. Both prominent conductors for improvised music, and I like to use them to help explain two important elements of conducted improv. Walter Thompson will help us with the gestures, and Lawrence Butch Morris will help us with defining our own technique and style when conducting. Let's look at hand gestures. We can take a look at Walter Thompson's methods to help understand how a system for conducted improvisation might work. Mr. Thompson uses a syntax comprised of different types of gestures. He is said to have over 1,500 gestures, many that work in combinations of each other. The most basic categories of these are who, what, how, and when. Who performs? What will be performed? How will it be performed? and when to perform it. For example, who, the strings, what, a long tone, how, low volume, when, now. Usually the how is left out to give the players liberty to play how they want. He uses a system of preparation, which means he usually gestures what he wants first, giving the players time to quickly prepare. Then he signs when to play. Some conductors of improvisation choose not to prepare their players, forcing them to improvise an idea in real time with no prior preparation. Let's take a quick look at some of the gestures Walter Thompson uses, and you can think about what you might want to use. The who, the entire ensemble. Those not playing, individual players, what? Now there are many of these, let's look at just a few, okay? Long sustained pitch, pitch up or pitch down, change, continue, memory. Now this is an important mechanic that is used by many conductors of improvised music. It helps give the music form. And there are other things like uh, mouth sounds, such as laugh, air sound, speak, whistle, etc. Or uh, styles of music, such as uh, minimalism or pointillism. 
And there are even some conjunction functions, such as the with gesture, which is a way of combining different gestures. How? Volume fader. Tempo fader. When? Play immediately. Enter or exit slowly. Don't forget about the players. They can also have gestures to guide the performance. For example, I like to include the loner gesture while conducting improv, where any player at any time can opt out of following the conductor and play whatever they want with the conducted music. The gesture for this looks like you're dramatically removing a hat. Come up with a list of pre-planned gestures and practice them in front of a mirror. But once you get going, you can start to stretch the idea of conducted improvisation out. I mean, you can even add a second conductor. 